This part comes in two versions. One is maths heavy, one is maths light. If you prefer the maths light version, an annotation should be appearing somewhere on your screen. At the end of the previous part, we left Schrödinger reading the thesis of Louis de Broglie, wherein de Broglie outlined his theory of electron waves, which would ultimately lead to the idea of matter waves. In a November 1925 letter to Albert Einstein, Schrödinger wrote, I have been intensely concerned these days with Louis de Broglie's ingenious theory. It is extraordinarily exciting, but still has some very grave difficulties. A week later, at a seminar on de Broglie's thesis, an audience member suggested that there should be a wave equation and, shortly afterwards, Schrödinger had derived his wave equation, a quantum wave equation which determines the behaviour of these matter wave wave functions. One form of his wave equation can be derived from the classical wave equation, second order partial differential with respect to x of psi xt equals 1 over v squared times second order partial differential with respect to t of psi xt. Assuming that the solution is going to be a standing wave of the form psi xt equals psi x times cos omega t, we substitute this into the classical wave equation giving us equation 3, open brackets second order differential with respect to x of psi x, close brackets times cos omega t equals 1 over v squared times psi x times the second order differential with respect to t of cos omega t. Carrying out the differential on the right hand side of the equation we get minus omega squared times cos omega t which we will now substitute back into equation 3 giving open brackets second order differential with respect to x of psi x close brackets times cos omega t equals minus omega squared over v squared times psi x times cos omega t. The cos omega t terms then cancel out giving an equation valid for classical waves. The second order differential with respect to x of psi x equals minus omega squared over v squared times psi x. From this we now, using the wave equation from Louis de Broglie, obtain the time independent Schrodinger equation. Given that omega equals 2 pi f which equals 2 pi v over lambda and that from Louis de Broglie we have lambda equals h over p, we can obtain via substitution omega equals 2 pi vp over h, which equals vp over h bar. This can be arranged into the form, open brackets omega over v, close brackets squared, equals p squared over h bar squared. This form is convenient as the left hand side is the same as a term we are looking to replace on the right hand side of the classical wave equation. Noting that the non-relativistic equation for kinetic energy is k equals p squared over 2m and that the total energy of a system is the sum of its potential and kinetic energies, that is, E equals k plus u. We can obtain via substitution the equation E equals p squared over 2m plus u, which is then rearranged to give p squared equals 2m open brackets E minus u close brackets which is then substituted into equation 5 to give open brackets omega over v close brackets squared equals 2m over h bar squared times open brackets e minus u close brackets. This can then be substituted into the classical wave equation yielding the time independent Schrodinger equation. Second order differential with respect to x of psi x equals minus 2m over h bar squared times open brackets e minus u close brackets times psi x. This is, it should be stressed, not the way that Schrodinger himself derived the equation. I've included a link to a discussion of how Schrodinger himself derived the equation which uses far more advanced mathematics than I could possibly muster at this stage. The above derivation, however, is a simple way to see how such an equation can be obtained and, to the best of my knowledge, is entirely valid. The above equation is time independent as it contains no time term and so is only useful for stationary waves rather than travelling waves. The derivation of the time dependent Schrodinger equation is foregone here for brevity and the simple fact that I'm not particularly comfortable with the mathematical techniques involved such as manipulating and deriving operators. The time dependent Schrodinger equation is i times h bar times the partial differential with respect to t of psi xt equals open brackets minus h bar squared over 2m times so second order partial differential with respect to x plus ux close brackets psi xt. These equations can be utilised to calculate the probability density or where we might find a particle. It has not been shown to be false as of yet. So does the wave function psi x actually represent anything oscillating? 
Oddly, no it doesn't. What it represents is the most complete description that can be given to a physical system. It contains all the information on the system, information that can be released via the right mathematical manipulation. In the next part, we'll look briefly at quantum mechanics and briefly discuss Schrodinger's equation. Thanks for watching.